Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, August 19th, 2020, and you're likely seeing this right as DNC Night 3 begins. So if you're intending on watching that, you can watch that or watch this video. You can pretty much just see the title of this video and you know what it's pretty much about. Um, if you don't really like the explanation, I guess you could skip to the end, but then again, that does take away from the main point of my reasoning for these states. So uh, that's all up to you to be completely honest. But uh, on today's video, we're going to be looking at Joe Biden's likeliest pathway to the presidency. So this is actually something that I've covered probably the least amount throughout my channel. I've actually covered, you know, what the election prediction as it stands today, a possibility of a Joe Biden landslide or a Donald Trump landslide, or a what if this scenario, you know, certain candidates entering into the race, dropping out, whatever it might be. I haven't really focused on Joe Biden's pathway to the election. I've made a video talking about how Donald Trump can win re-election. And I also have made videos months ago about how Joe Biden can win. But in terms of the states that I really think are going to flip, and the easiest, or not necessarily easiest, but um, probably easiest and most convenient pathway for Joe Biden to win the presidency lies in four states. Now, I normally consider three states to be the flipping states, but there are a number of states on this electoral map that likely vote together. And it's not because of similar region. For this video is a perfect example of that. It's just because of the amount of centrist and uh, moderate voters in this base that sure flipped over to the Donald Trump column that are returning to the uh, Democratic Party in this election. We're talking about white suburban voters. We're talking about, um, you know, major cities with a very large minority presence in the cities that drive Democrats to victory in these states. So we're going to work with margins. So we're going to have to worry about that when we're looking through this map. But a Joe Biden, you know, likeliest possibility of him winning the White House does not lie with a landslide scenario. Him winning in a number of states um, is pretty much going to be, well, this map at least, is not going to be some type of uh, Joe Biden 350 plus electoral vote margin. While he is the current favorite in my prediction in some of these states, um, as we get closer to the election, we are 75 days away. It is very possible and very probable at the same time um, that th these states will narrow up and we will likely see a closer election than what we're seeing today. But as the days and days go on, it is very possible as well that Joe Biden does not narrow up in terms of his lead. I mean, he's at an eight point lead before the convention, and we're about to see a possibility of a convention bump. So following that, following Joe Biden's speech on Thursday and Kamala Harris's speech tonight, we could likely see Joe Biden's numbers rise. And every single day we get closer to the election and the numbers don't fluctuate too much. So unless they you know, actually do narrow up, the election could end up being a Joe Biden type uh, electoral college modern day landslide. But I still do expect it to narrow up just... Uh, I'm just getting less and less comfortable saying that it will absolutely narrow up as we get closer almost two months out until the general election with no indication that the race is getting narrower. But looking at this map, I've pretty much characterized all of the states uh, that I consider to be, I guess you could say, lean or likely states for the Republican Party. Um, let's go ahead and just characterize all of these and then worry about the states that will be likely for the Democratic Party. I think Virginia and Colorado and New Mexico, these are all states that should be considered to be likely for the Democratic Party. And again, we're talking about a scenario in which Joe Biden wins the presidency. He would rely not on many of these swing states, to be completely honest with you. Out of the states Hillary Clinton did not carry in 2016, I think the likeliest scenario that Joe Biden wins the presidency is through four states. Normally it's three. This time it's four. If you have a general understanding of what um, you know, I talk about almost all the time, there's one specific state that used to be a Republican state, not so much now. These other three states uh, that we all know vote together typically have always been either toss-ups or Democratic states for the past couple of decades. But we should talk about some of these swing states because it is important to note that while Joe Biden does have a chance at winning some of them, he probably won't carry them. And in a situation in which Joe Biden is winning the presidency, it's going to take a lot to flip all of the swing states. It is very possible Joe Biden carries Arizona, Texas, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania individually, but not all together. The fact that all of these could possibly happen... Um, I mean, that's a big plus for the Biden campaign, but I don't realistically think that he will carry every single one of these swing states, probably going to drop off two to three to four, depending on the circumstance of the election. And even looking at national polling data, while Biden is up 8% nationwide, Ohio, he's only up by 0.4%. You go over to the next battleground state near uh, Ohio, you have Iowa, where Trump is up by 1.4%. This is a state that voted for Obama both times, despite Biden being up um, you know, this is a 10-point swing off the national average. Donald Trump leads by 1.4% in the state of Iowa. 
It also continues in some other swing states. They're a lot narrower than where they were. I mean, uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin roughly matched or were more Democratic than the national popular vote in 2012 and 2008 especially. In North Carolina, despite Biden being up 8% nationwide, North Carolina only has Biden up 1%. So the national average is really skewing in favor of Joe Biden, but a lot of these swing states aren't. And if we narrow down the election, you know, Biden's lead of 1% in North Carolina could dwindle down to being a possibly Trump leading by 1% with uh, Biden leading by 6% nationwide. We're talking about a two point swing here, which is why it is important for Biden to maintain his lead. But also, you know, it is likely that the numbers do narrow down, which means some states actually might stay the same. There are some states that are also matching the national average. Michigan is a perfect example. Michigan is a state that voted for Donald Trump by 11,000 votes in 2016. It's only one point off the national average. So in a worst case for Joe Biden, he goes down to a one point lead nationwide and then he loses Michigan. You have to keep that in mind. So Biden would have to lose a significant portion of his voters in order to lose some of these swing states, whereas the rest are only swing states because we're working with an environment where the Democratic candidate is leading by 8% leading into a convention. So with that in mind, let's characterize some of these states. I think Texas actually might move over from tilt into lean. We're starting to see a turn back of some of these Republicans in the past. Um, and I wouldn't say this is actually a prediction. Uh, things definitely can. But if we're talking about a narrowed up race, Texas definitely won't be tilt if Joe Biden's lead does dwindle from here. We also have to look at some other typical Republican states and realize they probably won't go to Joe Biden in this scenario. We're talking about a likely scenario, and while Georgia does have the possibility of going for Joe Biden, he probably has a one in three chance at carrying the state on election day. Hillary Clinton lost the state by 6% in 2016. Uh, Mitt Romney won the state by nearly 8% in 2012. So this state has narrowed up despite the rest of the country moving to the, le to the right in 2016. And then in 2018, we saw a statewide race to get very, very narrow. And as we go into 2020, the Democratic Party is eyeing up Georgia just because of the very large uh, percent African-American population. And they really think that with the changing white suburban voters, that they could very well win this state. And they could win this state, just it's not likely that they will. It's a possibility, whereas, you know, Democrats winning in Nebraska is not, except for Nebraska's second district. Well, but we'll talk about that when we get there. So Georgia, you know, I think will go to the Republican Party, even in my regular election prediction. I consider it to be a toss up, but now I'm going to move it back once I make my new video about it into the Republican column, just because of the fact, I mean, Georgia, Texas probably are going to get a little bit redder following the RNC in a couple of, uh, well, we'll see the direct impact of it in a couple of weeks. Um, and I, I honestly do think that on election day, they will still end up voting for Donald Trump. Texas, I have never characterized for Joe Biden. I think last time I characterized Georgia for Joe Biden was 2017. So um, these states are a long time coming for the GOP. If they actually do flip on election night, that'll be very significant uh, for the Democratic Party. Georgia, Texas, Republican states. Um, Iowa and Ohio, I think, are going to join the bunch, too. I still think that both of these states are going to go to Donald Trump, um, regardless of Biden leading in Ohio in the polls and being within a close margin in Iowa. I think these states will be competitive, but I still think that Biden won't be carrying them in a, his likeliest scenario at winning the presidency. He still probably won't come out on top, but he definitely will in a state such as Minnesota. We could see it easily happen in Maine at large, maybe not Maine's second district. Uh, you know, Joe Biden hasn't really... I wouldn't say he has the same type of Obama appeal. A lot of these main second voters uh, really liked Barack Obama. I don't think they haven't voted for a Republican in the past. So since its introduction as an electoral college vote, it's pretty much always voted for the Democratic Party. And looking at Maine's second congressional district following its 2016 swing, it'll take a lot more than just someone who resembles an Obama administration to win this uh, part of the state of Maine. I mean, this part has significantly moved to the right. Also on the House level, even when the Democrats were leading by nine points on the uh, generic ballot, 8% nationwide, sorry, not nine points, um, and they still only narrowly won this because of ranked choice voting. I mean, a lot of the times, you know, we're looking at Maine second district, and yes, we're working with an environment that is very favorable to the Democratic Party, but again, we're talking about a narrowed up race, uh, which would, at this point, give Donald Trump the victory in Maine second district. But for the Rust Belt, I think that Joe Biden will likely carry the Rust Belt. And these are the three states I was indicating in the future. Um, not in the future, in the past. In the past, in the beginning of this video, um, I was talking about Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And these are uh, the states that flipped for Donald Trump in 2016 and the blue wall that the media loved to cover because Iowa, Ohio, you know, these were always toss up states. At one point in time, Indiana. And they all went to Donald Trump. And that wasn't super surprising given that these states had Donald Trump leading in the polls. But these three states did not. 
Now, while Michigan and Pennsylvania were well within the margin of error, 538 actually released an article um, the day of the election saying only a very minimal change off the margin of error could very well swing the election in favor of Donald Trump. Wisconsin was the only state that was outside the margin of error. So I do think that in the likeliest scenario, Joe Biden does win the Rust Belt, but I don't think that uh, it'll be by a likely margin. If the election does really narrow up before election day, we probably won't see a six to eight point victory. If it's held today, absolutely. But maybe not in a couple of months, uh, given that there are so many things that could happen. And I think that with these three Rust Belt states, another state is going to join them. I think that the state of Arizona will also join the Democratic Party in electing Joe Biden to the presidential spot. Um, these four states will likely have a similar margin. Arizona, while being a Republican state since 96, uh, is still, you know, has a possibility of going to Joe Biden. He's leading in the polls right now. Uh, 2018 was a perfect example of Arizona moving leftward. So Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania will all likely follow each other and likely vote for Joe Biden on election night. In Nebraska's 2nd District, I think this one will also follow suit. We're likely going to see Nebraska's 2nd go to the Democratic Party. Um, and I can say that today. I can say that tomorrow. And in a couple of months, I still expect the same result from that district. Narrowed up absolutely in 2016 compared to 2012. It seems a lot of those, um, you know, Omaha-esque Republicans, maybe not are maybe not too inclined to vote for Donald Trump a second time around because they weren't too much the first time. So Joe Biden's at 286. I forgot to characterize New Hampshire for whatever reason. I'm considering that to be likely for the Democrats. Uh, but North Carolina and Florida, even though Biden's leading there right now, and he has a roughly 70% chance in Florida, roughly 60% chance at North Carolina, I think in the likeliest scenario when we're talking about a narrowed up election day that Donald Trump still comes out on top. 2018, the Republicans did. 2016, the Republicans did. 2014, the Republicans did. And even in 2012, when Obama won with 332 electoral votes, he won Florida by 0.3%. So this state was always narrow, always very close. It's a swing state. I think, you know, working when um, the Democrats are up right now in the polls, but I do think that the Republicans will likely outperform the polls that we have right now, which is why I haven't characterized it likely, despite the data indicating that it at one point in time was a seven point lead for Joe Biden in Florida when I was making a video about it. Florida has always been in my lean Democrat characterization or lean Republican characterization because I don't necessarily think that the data um, will be 100 percent accurate. I still think that they are predicting a Joe Biden win on Election Day, but a lot of things can happen. And the likeliest scenario with a Joe Biden presidency is him flipping these four states, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona, totaling up to 290 electoral votes for Joe Biden and 248 for Donald Trump. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to comment down suggestions below and on the community tab. If you go ahead and check out my channel, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, please. But if you check out my channel and go to the community tab, I have a little uh, post where you can comment down a suggestion for a video that you'd like me to do. At the bottom left of the screen, there's a Instagram and Twitter. And the Twitter is where I'll be live tweeting DNC night three and a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 election videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.